Welcome back to Ame's Bookshelf. I'm Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi. Today's review has been sitting in my to-record pile for quite a while as I work through my long list. This is about Femme Fatale Online by Eugene Rogers. You can find this on Amazon.com. I found it through an article in the SL Newser that was sent to Bixel Schuften to post. I'm rating this five stars because it was very well written and I enjoyed it, although I am going to go into more detail a bit later on how it managed to keep five stars. The age rating is 17 plus, and I am going to be very firm on that preferably 18 plus because some of the content is really really hard line again i found this through an editorial that was published in the second life newser which is a newspaper or blog for second life that's run by bixel schuften as this book was billed as dealing with the virtual world it was interesting to me it was purported to also touch on the subject of sexuality, which it indeed does. It also very definitely speaks to the need to be able to trust the person on the other side of the computer screen and not giving away too much to the wrong people, and the importance of not doing shady things on the internet. Period. There were several times I wanted to throw my iPad in supreme irritation at the main character's stupidity. There were several times that his dumb decisions triggered me and made me relive issues that I am still dealing with to this day. I could identify with the wife too well because of my own past, which some of you know about and I'm not going to go into. Rick, or Isaac, thinks more with his intimate appendage than he ought, and although he tries to control it and is aware of his shortcoming, he still allows it to lead him into bad things. Bad things like Joan. Joan is an amoral, her own words, business person engaging and forcing her network to engage in espionage. She and her team blackmails not-so-savvy folks into feeding them info. If the subjects do not comply, then bad things happen, just like any spy book. Although I want to beat the main character with something heavy, not his marriage vows, as he does actually try to uphold them, even if he does skirt them like a dummy, he does manage to be relatable. I would imagine that he would be more relatable if someone didn't have the same sort of background that I do. However, it is difficult, and I will admit this, not to let my personal experiences color my interpretation of his very well-written character. I mean, he's believable. He's very believable. This story has some interesting twists and turns while our main character tries to figure out who Joan is and how he can extricate himself and his family from her clutches. It brings up interesting thoughts to pursue on the nature of sexuality, manipulation, and online safety. Although it is very open about sexuality, I do think that if your kid, your teen, your older teen, can handle a frank and honest discussion about sex and sex ed, it is something that would serve as a good cautionary tale regarding the internet. A Bridget for them, but, you know, it's a good warning book. Although there are many wonderful friends to be made out there online, there are also many Jones out there. I do think that everyone active online should read this or watch any movie or series stemming from it. I also think that lovers of thrillers would find this to be a good read. 
At first, I wanted to give this book three stars because of how hard I was triggered. It's not fair, though, so I didn't. Just because I disagree with just about every decision the main character makes is not a just cause to do so. Again, the book itself is well-written. The characters believable and accurate. It hooks and flows with well-done characters. So I have to give this one a five-star review with my logical brain. Even though Emotional Brain gives Isaac himself a firm one star on relationship and safety intelligence. It also makes for an interesting moral read, and less due to the ultimate outcome of the story as a whole. I really did enjoy the character development that went on in this. It wasn't a flat character. He did learn as he went through. There was a love triangle in this Actually, probably more like two love triangles, if you want to be totally accurate. And he does move through them and learn and grow. And the characters all seem to move and grow. I am a bit disappointed in who the villain behind Joan actually turned out to be. Just because of how easy a thing it was to shoot for. Just, uh, I don't really want to spoil it for anybody that reads it and gets that far because it might if I talk too much about it, but I'm very disappointed in this because of what it can paint these people as. I encourage you to read it and I would like to discuss it with anybody that, you know, is interested enough in it. So, you know, please feel free to hit me up in the comments below. By the time you comment, I might not fully remember what all I read, but it is memorable enough. I'll probably remember some of it. For the curious, this episode of Ame's Bookshelf was recorded using a lavalier plugged into the laptop on Audacity using a program called Voice Meter that was supposed to bring up my voice and make it work better with mix with three X's, the DJ software, so that I can be heard when attempting to read live over the internet stream. As you could probably hear, it seems to have a bit of a strange effect to it when the recording chain has been implemented, which I am not exactly pleased with, but I will make a, a secondary review on this review of voice meter. And that's meter with two E's, M-E-E-T-R. You can find this for free online, and I apologize for the dog in the background. I read lots of good things about it, but I'm not too convinced, and I kind of honestly regret installing it, but right now I'm having to use it anyway, because it does have some benefits on some things. It seems to be helping a lot with the quality of the voice processing for hearing what things actually sound like on other systems. And it actually works fairly well, it seems, for with Discord, with um, a gaming session that I'm involved with, which still has its ups and downs due to my internet connection, but at least they can hear me, which wasn't a problem before with what came in pre-installed on my laptop with Discord. But it just was not being loud enough on mix to be properly usable. So I'm not really certain if I'm going to be keeping voice meter or not. I'm still considering that. But it's not something that I would recommend personally. So there you go. A bonus review. Avoid voice meter. So until next time, I'm Teresa Garcia or Amehana Arashi. Happy reading.